One man is on a mission to source, restore, and sell some of the world's most elusive and hidden wreckages from World War II. Wow! Nice! This isn't just a job, this is his livelihood. He is the Wreck Raider. Sam D'Amico has a unique job, scouting out the world's remaining World War II wreck sites. Tank, plane, whatever, that's great. I like the history about it, I like to, you know, I like to search. With an estimated 100,000 wrecks scattered around the globe, with parts worth tens of thousands of dollars to collectors, Sam has the potential to make big bucks. Sam owns a machine shop in Rochester, New York, and has the skills to restore wreckages or sell parts to investors, all to turn a tidy profit. Today, he's in remote Alaska to enlist the help of an old friend. Joe is ex-Special Forces and will be Sam's right-hand man and muscle for this mission. Don't touch anything. You're not allowed to touch nothing in here, okay? Their mission is to track down a B-29 bomber rumored to be scattered in the Alaskan mountains. Not the easiest of challenges. We really wanted to get down to business about what we're really doing. and. and that's looking for this B-29 that has eluded us. Well, it's been about three years now we've been trying to get up there to look at this thing. It's day one. Sam's come to Palmer Airfield to meet Joe before their flight to Lake Lewis, base camp. So let's, let's discuss our, our objective here. Yeah, that's it. This is it. This that's is what's up there. Yep. 4,000 feet. 4,000 feet. Okay. B-29s are heavy bombers primarily used by the U.S. Air Force at the end of World War II. Sam has an investor friend in Omaha who is currently restoring a B-29. He's hoping that he can salvage parts from the wreck and help his friend complete his restoration. How hard is this going to be to get up there? It's going to be hard. Like Sammy hard or Joey hard? It's going to be Joe hard. Oh, great. <laughs> Where this thing is, or where we think it is, trying to get out there, is kind of going to be an adventure. Two hours later and Sam and Joe have made it to base camp, Lake Lewis, the nearest outpost of civilization to the B-29's supposed location. Wow, it's a little bit chillier here than in Palmer. The guys have a rough idea of where the B-29 might be. They head down to the lake to meet the locals to pick up any extra information. Well, we were told that you might know some, some of the history about some stuff around here. I've heard about it. There's all kinds of stuff floating around out here. It's out there in the swamp somewhere. So there's some really different stuff that people have run across out in this mm -hmm. country. It's about six or eight miles away. Oh, well, it was in the 50s when they lost it. The locals helped Sam narrow the aircraft's location down to a small area on the mountain. Need to get some sleep. Day two, and with a rough idea of the wreck's coordinates, the guys take to their ATVs. The B-29. Using ATVs is the cheapest way of getting to the wreck, but it's proving difficult. Go forward, go forward. Lean way forward. When we're up higher, we don't, it's not as wet, it's nice. But when we dip down into the low spot that's even with the water table down here in the, in the creek, then, you know, we run into all that swampy, soupy area. Good, good. Sam decides the small ATVs are not working, and reluctantly, they head back to base. New day, new vehicles. The guys are clear on the exact coordinates of the wreck site. However, getting to it is still the problem, and tension is beginning to run high. Reality. I think he's getting walking around in this and driving through this stuff. He's seeing just what, what the reality is. I mean, this is some thick stuff. After a 48-hour stint without reaching the wreck, Joe's overbearing leadership is causing a problem for Sam. When we get to a point where there might be a dangerous crossing or an incline or a side of a mountain or a muddy something that's going to be a little bit beyond your ability, I'll take over. 
This isn't a pep rally. We're not in high school. Okay. All right. So I, what's your point? I know my limitations, and if I decide, like that hill right there, I'm not crossing that hill. I'm not gonna. I don't care if we get there and it takes us twenty thousand dollars to get there. I'm not crossing that hill. What part of you don't have to do it? Did you not hear? But see, you're not my daddy. Don't push your abilities on I'm me. I'm not. Okay. If I decide I don't want to do it, I'm not doing it. Period. I mean, are you going to continue to rant and rave, or are we going to fucking do this, or what? All right, let's go. After a fruitless and stressful day, the guys are heading back to base camp. Sam calls his investor and explains the only option left to him. We've had a, a heck of a fight trying to get up there uh, on ATVs, and we haven't been able to make it. I got a chopper on standby now. I'll keep you posted. Despite being the easiest route to Bald Mountain, every second in the chopper is eating into Sam's profits. But the potential of earning thousands of dollars is spurring him on. As the weather clears, the team get their first view of the crash site. This is the way shit's done. I feel like I'm in mass. Yeah. Well, cocaine okay, clinger. <laughs> Now, don't go falling and killing yourself just yet. Over here. Yeah, and Sam is just like a kid in a candy store, you know? He's got that, that wrecked tunnel vision. Oh, yeah, buddy. Well, you're starting to see little pieces scattered. You're starting with small pieces, and they get bigger and bigger. So sweet. This is part of the nose right here. We got on the nose first, and the flattened part of the side of the nose, and I can make out the cockpit windows. That's the nose gear right there. I was out walking around looking to see what parts were what and where they were laying, and he was definitely on doing his job. He was on his mission and trying to look for numbers and serial plates and data plates. Oh, look, look at it. Temperature gauge. Oh, 3350, baby. A lot of horses right there. I came up upon a hulk of metal, first of four engines. Man, the stacks are still in good shape. Look at this. Most of that engine can be used for a rebuild, for, to possibly use for a running engine. Every wreck has a story to tell, and it can take just a small object to bring it all home. Here you go, right here, man. Here's what puts it in perspective. Sole of a shoe. Yep, that's of right. A, of an air, air boot. That's right, right here. Well, that boot, man, it just makes me feel bad, you know, that, uh, that it had to happen in the first place. Poor guys. These men, they were there one moment, and then the next moment they're, you know, they're meeting their maker. In 1956, this four-engine Air Force B-29 crashed at 4,200 feet. Eight men were instantly killed as it hit Bald Mountain minutes after departing Elmendorf Air Base. Wow, it just came off right at the bulkhead. There's your star, star and bar right there. This is incredible from here. This would have been your tail gunner's position. It hit pretty hard, the dirt's right in here. This looks like a fueler. This is a fueling aircraft. Can't describe it at the moment. I'm trying to visualize in my head how this impacted. They must have come in, saw the mountain at the last minute, tried to pull up, scraped up, and it just broke in half. Hey, listen, I got some good news for you. I am standing at 3,500 feet on Bald Mountain. We just came back from the wreck. Called my buddy David in uh, Omaha. They've got a B-29 they're restoring there, and I was able to tell them, you know, we found parts that he could use to help restore the plane they have. There's 100,000 other airplane out there to look for. This is just number one. I think we accomplished our mission. You know, it's a dream to do this stuff. Definitely a wreck, and it is definitely one for the books. This is a check off the list in the Rec Raiders catalog. Thank you.